before I get started, I'm gonna praise God and glory to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah by Shem Rekai Kadash, the double honor to the apostles and the elders that I learn this truth from, the men at GMS, and the brethren with the like minded doctrine, which the brother Bakalai Wallah here with another hope for edifying lesson to their leg body Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Um, I don't have a title right now. You know, maybe one come to mind while I'm doing this lesson, but I don't really have one. Um, I was looking at this earlier, you know, because basically um, my title might be, you know, the Fourth Industrial Revolution, you know, the NWO, you know, which is the um, the New World Order. Which, um, the fourth industrial revolution and the great reset is a part of this it is basically what this new world order is about you know with um the so-called white man you saw either you know uh, making creating man turning man into his own image and turning man into his own image by trying to merge man with machine you know he's um um, starting with, um, you know, the, the MOTV, which is the CF, you know, and all these um, devices that you can attach to yourself, you know, being a cyborg, you know, and things like that, right? That's part of the fourth industrial revolution, merging man with machine. He's trying to make man into his own image. But um, this lesson right here is basically going to focus on the outcome autonomy, right, which, which is um, robotics, which is, that's a part of the NWO, you know, that um, Esau Edom is trying to re take everybody to basically out of the job force and replace the work, the workers with autonomy or basically robots, you know, and put everybody on this universal income, you know. Which, you know, I'm gonna just focus on the autonomy, right? Because that's basically what he's trying to do. You know, uh, you will own nothing and be happy. The Klaus Schwab, you know, he he says that, right? That you will own nothing, nothing, and be happy. You know, because uh, the the elite will own everything. You know, you, you won't be even there. You won't, you won't even be able to own a vehicle and things like that, you know, which in actuality, you don't own it anyway. Like, like even today, you don't own it because if you fall behind on your property tax, they can, the state can come in and take your vehicle, your house, you know, and so really you don't own anything anyway, you know, because if you fall behind on your property tax, the state, so-called white man you saw eat him will come and take it so um i'm gonna play this video here this is from um it says um uaw president sean fain lays out where union big three stands so the that uaw is the um, stands for the united automobile workers so basically, there's a strike going on with the uh, United Automobile Workers, and the president here, this guy Sean Fain, is going to lay out or tell you what how, what they where they stand on this um, on this thing, right? So I'm going to go ahead. Six of this UAW strike right now. UAW president, UAW president Sean Fain is ready to do an update. Let's listen in. Not just in the big three. This week, nearly 1,000 UAW members walked out on strike at three casinos here in Detroit as part of the Detroit Casino Council. During the pandemic, these workers barely got a raise, so they've launched the first ever wall-to-wall -wall casino strike. Yesterday, we joined those members along with Blue Cross Blue Shield UAW members on strike and Big Three UAW members on strike. Secretary Treasurer Margaret Mock and Vice President Mike Booth told the crowd that this isn't just about one industry or one workplace. 
It's about the whole working class finally standing up to corporate greed. So what he just said there, he says it's not about one industry, which that industry is the car industry. He says about the whole working class in America standing up against corporate greed, right? That's what he said. Let me just rewind it. That this isn't just about one industry or one workplace. It's about the whole class finally standing up to corporate greed. Sunday night, the master contract will expire covering. So basically, that's what that's that's the that's what I want to get out from this video. The point that you said this is a, this is basically about the whole working class of America standing against the um, the greed of the corporations, right? This is this just this is not about one industry or one uh, one uh, you know well basically one industry right it's the whole representation of the whole working class standing up against the greed of corporate America but who own these corporate these corporate uh, corporations you know the elites you know they own these corporations right so basically um, that's the point I was getting out and. This is also a prophecy, right? Which I'm hopefully I bring that out. That like Mark, well, Mark's Mark the 13th chapter reads about troubles, right? So there should be famines, wars, and rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places, and troubles. So this is like falls under the category of troubles. You know, people are uh, protesting for this case against um, corporate greed. Uproars of the people are all over. Uproars of the people, you know, in the world. But I got another video I want to play. Right? See, that's the point that um they are protesting or on strike. Where well, they on strike, which strike is a form of protesting um against um, corporate greed. So I got another video. Um, bear with me that I want to bring out. All right, this video here, right, is on um, channel. This is John Williams, right? It popped up in my feed today, right? And the title of this video says, Amazon buys 750,000 robots to replace staff. So basically that's what I was talking about, about automative, out of automation. It's a lot of you, if I'm saying it correctly. Uh, yeah, automation. Uh, so that's what it is. You know, this is a part of the new world order. So this is why Amazon is buying robots. Like I said, the fourth industrial revolution. They're trying to replace the workers with robots. And um, like this guy, the first video I just showed you about the um, United Automobile Worker Workers um, Strike. With the president there, the guy that was the president was showing their stance and said they, um, the working class, this is a representation of the whole working class of America stand, standing up against corporate greed. But I'm going to, this, um, the guy here is going to show you what, basically, what they're going to do about you people uniting together to, to go against the corporations or going, basically going against the elites. And, look, and looking to get fair wages, fair benefits, or whatever on you, whatever the strike um, is um, concerned with. So I'm gonna just let this video play, right? True, they have. But look at this. Amazon said there's more than 750,000 robots working collaboratively with our employees, taking on highly repetitive tasks and fully bringing employees up to better deliver for our customers. better deliver for our customers. For context, they have 1.541 million employees right now, according to this article. So 750,000 robots. At some point, Amazon will realize this robot workforce will do a better job filling orders than humans because robots don't get sick, they don't take breaks, they don't complain, they don't strike, they don't you know, waste time watching TikTok videos. And also- So what he just said there, the, the robots don't complain, they don't get sick, they don't strike, they don't complain about wages right so this is the this is the, this is the elite 
solution to you people, you know, uh, that has any, um, you know, disagreements with how you're being treated within your company. Um, if you, you feel that the company is not, you know, um, um, doing their part in, in um, making the employees happy, if that's dealing with you, or whatever the case may be, you know, they, they, they got a solution. These robots to replace you, right? That's, that's, basically, that's what it is, you know? They don't have to worry about people striking or complaining because they can have these robots and they can replace you, right? So I'm going to just play it again, right? Thousand robots. At some point, Amazon will realize its robot workforce will do a better job filling orders than humans because robots don't get sick, they don't take breaks, they don't complain, they don't strike, they don't you know, waste time watching TikTok videos, and also they're not going to demand more money as inflation likely persists. Or in the event of another sickness or pandemic or situation like that, if their entire facility, their entire building was operated primarily through robots, that would give them a massive competitive advantage in a world with heavy restrictions. So this is all a situation in which Amazon is going to grow to become a behemoth in the coming decade. We it just is not going to just be Amazon. It's going to be all these companies, you know, because that's what I think he's going to go into it if I'm going to get to it or play because basically like just like what this pandemic done, it basically shoved out the middle class to um, uh, put a, you know, shut down the middle class, the um, the um, um, the people that own their own business type, you know, basically that's what they did. That's what they are um, trying to do. Like Revelations, um, the 13th chapter says on um, 13 and 16, he calls it all both small and great, rich and poor, because they're only going to be two classes. It's not going to be the poor class, the middle class, and the rich. You know, they're trying to do away with the middle class, you know. So with that pandemic that just passed, it um, showed you that, right? How they shut down or made it impossible for the middle class business owners, perfect, um, you know, own it, ones that own their own business to... to to stay in, stay oper to, to operate re re regularly, right? The yeah, only one that only ones that um that really benefited was the the major corporations like Amazon, for example. You know, WalMarts, these major corporations, and all the other ones. You know, they they the one that benefit benefited from these shutdowns, you know, and, um, and what they, and, and what they're going to do is replace the people, the workers with robots. It's not just going to be Amazon. Cause just like the guy said, this is, uh, in the first video, he said, this is, um, the workers in all industries basically stand up again. You know, Cause he said, um, the robots don't complain. They don't get sick. They don't watch, they don't waste time watching TikTok videos, you know. They don't go on strike. They don't um, want more money, you know. Um, they just they just dare to do what they're supposed to do, you know, for free, basically. So I'm gonna just play it again, right? They have 1.5 million employees right now, this article. So, seven fifty thousand. At some point, Amazon will realize its robot workforce will do a better job filling orders than humans because robots don't get sick, they don't get breaks, they don't complain, they don't strike, they don't well, you know, waste time watching tests. They're not going to demand more money as inflation likely persists. Or, in the event of another sickness or pandemic or situation like that, if their entire facility, their entire building was operated primarily through robots, that would give them a massive advantage in the world with heavy restrictions. So, this is a grow become behemoth in the coming decade. We have penned plenty of notes over the years to inform readers about the coming massive layoff. Great corporations will have to unleash new AI. Now, there's $2 trillion in corporate debt that has to get refinanced over the next year. So what are we going to see? We're going to see a lot more layoffs, a lot of employees getting laid off, which is going to have a ripple effect across the housing market as well. But there's going to see a lot of companies leaning into artificial intelligence and AI and technology and robots and all these for this crisis we're walking into. Using data on occupational tasks in both the U.S. and Europe, 
we find that roughly two thirds of current jobs are exposed to some degree of AI automation and that generative AI could substitute up to one fourth of current work. Extrapolating, our estimates globally suggest that generative AI could expose the equivalent of 300 million full time jobs to automation as up to two thirds of occupants could be partially automated by AI. So, what else is Amazon doing? They're working right now. This is 2021. This is how far back they've Amazon is reportedly buying a thousand autonomous instructions. It's going to go from having 1.5. Um, so like, yeah, I'm having, uh, I was having, so I couldn't even pause the video. I was having some difficulties trying to pause the video, but I think the guy tells you at the beginning that this is part of the fourth industrial revolution. <laughs> Basically, the order. So, um, that's what this is, right? Let's see. at the transcript. Hopefully this video is on is playing correctly, you know, because you know the devil is hurt when this information is out, man. You know. I'm not gonna I'm just go ahead and play the video. See if he, I think he's gonna say it. Amazon is testing a humanoid robot to houses. They want to digit. Amazon says it's revolutionizing the way consumers get their orders. We are a of robotics. What we're witnessing right now is the world of innovation, automation. We're about to witness about change like robots. There's not to run up the folks who used to actually have the job. The people. Amazon says they're proves other that they are at Amazon as they are adding robotics. The person who might be lifting those shelves or lifting those toes is a different person. They may now need to on engineering skills or different kinds of critical thinking. When you look at what Amazon's new robot is doing, just remember this is just the beginning stages of this. In the coming couple of years, automation is going to grow dramatically, and with it, many careers and lives will change. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly what's going on to compare and plan in advance for a world of change. I'm going to show you which careers are going to be greatly impacted and which ones are likely not going to be impacted. As well. So, yeah, basically that's what this is. This is a part of the fourth industrial revolution. You know, automators, you know, automation, right? Um, they're trying to replace workers with robots, just like the title says Amazon buys 750,000 robots to replace staff. So this is not just going to happen at Amazon. It's going to be at all these major corporations um, and um, who own these corporations are these elites, you know, of Edom. These Edomites, man, you know. So they are um, trying to usher in this um, PW world, right? And automators, robots, cyborgs, merging man with machine. This is a part of that NWO, that great reset. You know, trying to make man into his own image. You know, robotics, AI, technology. You know, this is the so-called white man playing the most high, playing God. So um, I got another video that I want to play basically in relation to these corporations. So bear with me. This is Agenda 2030 is the agenda of the NWO, right? It says depopulation of farmer, farmer's land captures artificial food shortage, artificial food shortages, right? So I'm going to go ahead and play this, this video here, right? It's going to tie into these um, corporate owners, right? And, and their plan. Which own collectively kill each other, so it's a junk corporation. But they also own 89% of the S&P 500. Everything. They've now decided to buy every single family home in America. Though, if they stay on current trajectory, they will own 60% of the homes in this country, single family homes by 2030. They literally are trying to buy everything. The head of it, Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, is on the board of the World Economic Forum, and what they, you know, they've said, we want this great reset, which is, you will own nothing and you will be happy. Well, they're on their way. So, we're going to go into this guy, uh, Larry Flint. Flint, you know, like you say, he's he's he's, uh, he's the CEO uh, for BlackRock, and they own all these corporate, they own all these companies, right? He's a corporate, he's a corporation, and, and he got a seat at the World um, 
World um, Economic Forum. And they got a um, great reset. They want they they are part. He, they want a great reset, basically the NWO, you know. And automators, like you seen in the third, the second video, autonomy, right? It's like your autonomy. These robots is a part of this uh, great reset. To making sure that we don't own anything. You all probably have heard of people who are about to buy a home. And somebody comes in with at the last minute with cash offer and inspections off the out of the market. Right. And it's usually an LLC with an ambiguous name. But if you trace that up, you'll find it's owned by BlackRock. They're using every kind of pretext you can possibly imagine to seize massive amounts of land, whether it's the Endangered Species Act. Oh, there might be an owl on your property somewhere, or it's the carbon capture. We got to get CO2 under, so we got to build these huge pipelines, so we have to take thousands and thousands of the best acres of farmland out of production. Uh, but the same things are happening all over the world, and that, that's one of the things I wanted to emphasize in my brief little introduction. Uh, they are taking massive amounts of land everywhere in the world, and they're using different pretexts. In Brazil, they were saying they were going to give the land back to the Indians. In South Africa, they were doing expropriation without compensation. They want to add it into the Constitution now under the guise of racial justice. Um, in the United States, it has to do with environment, climate, uh, endangered species, things like that. In China, they don't even need an excuse. Just get off the land or we're going to shoot you, right? Um, and, and so the same thing is happening all over the world using different pretexts. But I think the objective is always the same. Like she said, remove people off of the land so that you can remove their freedom, so you can bring them under control. And just one thing to add on that, using the Netherlands, all these regulations, the climate compliance regulations, all go after the small, medium, uh, family-run, generational, small business farms. And once you replace it with the big corporate entities, you get you can have corporate government collusion that will go along with this agenda. In the case of uh, reducing high, high, there's a war on high agricultural yields, going after nitrous oxide, etc. So it's the same way COVID lockdowns affected the small businesses, and you know, meanwhile the corporate chains could survive. They want the crushing of small business because that's how you're going to fight back. The, the small independent corporate and government are colluding in one voice on all of this. And we're seeing it with the cars, by the way, too. They're, um, the World Bank isn't going to fund cars. Corporate banks aren't going to give out car loans. You have uh, all of this is done without a vote. The most consequential decisions, whether we can eat meat, high yield agriculture, buy a gas powered car, is all being decided between corporate, government, executive, bypassing democracy like a COVID lockdown. We didn't vote for mask mandates or vaccine mandates or lockdown. So we just told you that, right? Oh, um, that what? You know, they're trying to get rid of the the, the middle class, which is the uh, people, the small the small business owners, and um, the corporations are taking over. You know, and they're gonna go along with this government plan, which the government is ran by who? The the elites of Esau Edom. You know, these corporations are ran by the so-called white man Esau Edom. The governments also. They are ran by the. That's why they said it, he says collude collusion, um, meaning they're gonna work together. You know, so they trying to. He said um, the the, um, the small business owners are the ones that could put up a fight against against these against these corporations. So they're gonna choke them out with these regulations, with pandemics. You know. And these these corp these major corporations are going to take over, which is owned by the elites, and also they're going to work together with the government, which is owned by the elites. You know, so this is a part of Agenda Twenty Thirty. You know, the NWO. Um. And bringing in this autonomy, and basically, like like the first video I showed you about the workers going on strike, they 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 are not going to be concerned with the people because they can do away with you. It's the autonomy, you know, they don't have to worry about um, people calling in sick, you know, um, asking for higher wages, you know, going on strike. They just have robots take your place, and this is a part of the NWO, you know. Agenda 2030. And I got. I just want to um, show you who this guy is. Um, Larry Flint. 
I just put Google Larry Flint religion and look what this is, right? So that's who that's who that's who it is, man. He grew up as one of three children in a Jewish family, you know. So that's 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 him, you know. You know, and I'm gonna just put the image up. That's him right here, you know. Black Rock. This is him. These are these are the you know the uh the, the lower elite, you know. That runs the world, you know, the, of, of Esau Eden, you know. So they're going to take over. Uh, they trying to take over. This is part of his in enterprise that I was talking about in the book of Job, that the Lord is going to disappoint. All right. And I got a, just another article about the universal income. Which I'm not going to read the whole article, but it's just going to show you. Right? This is cause this is a part of their plan. From daily um, food, if I'm pronouncing it right. Say six hundred on the Slovakia six six million seven hundred and fifty thousand would be handed out with no strings attached as new granted income program launches in US. So this is a part of it. That's that. Um, this is all um, that universal income. You know, there's no strings attached. So it's gonna try to lure you people in. And, and what's gonna um, and what's gonna be a part of it? You gonna have to um, have a a part of this is um. What's going to, uh, for, so you people uh, going to take your part in having this, you're going to be, it's going to be required that you take the um, MOTB. You know, it's going, that's basically, that's the string that's going to be attached. You know, you're going to have, you're going to have to take the CHIP, the CHIP, you know. Elon Musk head headwear head gadget, you know, literally, you had to take that to uh, participate in this NWO, this Great Reset, you know, the Fourth Industrial Revolution, this universal income. This is a part of it, right? Says a new grant guaranteed income program is set. It's a guaranteed income program is set to disperse millions of dollars to families on the West Coast. So what? Why you think they want to do this? You know, because they bringing in the fourth industrial revolution. People, uh, people are not going to be working. They're going to put you on this universal income. You know, this is probably more or less as a trial run. You know. But this is a part of the NWO. So, you know, you know, Lord, Lord willing, you know, I'm going to see about, you know, because, let me see. Then, uh, well, you can go ahead and get out. This is Mark. So this is, when he was talking about the, the it was striking, right? Because this is a, uh, this is a uh, prophecy. In Mark chapter 13 and 8, it says, For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginning of sorrows. So these are troubles, troubling times. So that's why people are protesting, uproads of the people, you know, go into these troubles. That's what it is. Trump people are... Um, they, they're uh, striking, um, protesting, and, and this is a part of those troubles, you know. This word trouble means, I mean, you just go and so
It says, the outline of biblical uses said disturbance, commotion. So that's what it is, you know. You see disturbances, commotions, seditions. So all these things are you seeing, you know. And also, this, this is a part of... Um, I'm going to this word enterprise, and I think it's, it's in the book of Job. So this is this is the enterprise. Yeah, Job five and twelve said he disappointed the devices of the crafty, crafty, so that. He, so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. And that enterprise is the new world order. You know, the Lord is going to disappoint these devils, man, you know. And their enterprise is this new world order, this fourth industrial revolution, uh, this great reset. This is what their enterprise is. Let me see what this word means. Enterprise, success, you know, that's because that's what they think they're going to be successful when they get most of everybody because that's what they're going to they get most everybody with that C hip. So they're going to think, like this word says right here, success. They're going to think they success. They're going to be, they think they're going to be successful. But um, the Lord is going to disappoint. This, this enterprise, you know, he's gonna he's gonna disappoint these demons by casting his fury on it, fury on it, you know, which is the MOTB, well, I'm gonna lock it, which is the ICBM nuclear missiles. <laughs> he's gonna cast his fury on them. ICBM nuclear missiles and also the the uh, the, um, the uh, laser beam fire from the chariots. So uh, that's how the Lord is going to disappoint his demon, you know, his schemes, devices of the crafty man. Because you know, there's nothing new under the sun, and this is this is all. Uh, Talked about also, you know, in Babylon, talking about the people should be one. You know, the Tower of Babel. You know, talked about it this is in the book of Genesis, right? Yeah, this is the book of um, Genesis it's in the eleventh chapter, right? Like 
grace stay, and this is where it tells you. you know, That's that's where they, they all want to be one. Um, um, Genesis eleven and four, and it says, and they said, "Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach into heaven, and let us make us a name, lest." Less, um. We, we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down, Yahweh came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built. And the Lord Yahweh said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and and, and this they being so like in this they begin to do and now nothing will be restrained from them that they have imagined to do so this is the same um thing that these elites of Edom is trying to do trying to unite new world order one world government they're trying to unite everybody on a this one world thing it's a universal income that's going to be across the whole earth so it's nothing new under the sun, you know. They're going to try to do it again. And it says, verse 7, it says, go, go to, let us go down and and there confound their languages that they may not understand one another. Speech. So the Lord scattereth them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth and they left all to build the city, you know. So the Lord confounded their language, confused their language. They would be able to, they wasn't able to understand each other. But the Lord is going to destroy this new world order, one world government, um, to set up his to set up his new world order. You know. So, you know, it talks about this in the book of Mac um, Maccabees, too. But, um, It says leave off their own, leave off their language. Yeah. First book, first book of Mac, first Maccabees, first chapter. It says, verse 41, it says, Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to the whole kingdom that all should be one people, and that everyone should leave his laws, so all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed to idols and profaned the Sabbath. And the king hath sent letters by messengers into the into Jerusalem and the cities of Ju in, in the city of Judah, that they should follow the strange laws of the land and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple, and that and that they should profane the Sabbath and feast. And festival days and pollute the sanctuary and the holy people and set up altars and groves and chapels and idols and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts that they should 
also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and um, profanation. Profanity. So, there's nothing new in the sun. You know, they tried it twice. You know, so this is the, this is the third time that they're gonna try this. You know, this new world order com, um, combined all people as one. You know, so but the Lord is gonna disappoint this devil. You know, so I hope it's edifying to the elect. Now, I'm going to say, call Hola Yama Yahweh by Shem Rakakadash. Shalom until next time, Yahweh, Rathazah, which means well willing, Wa Aba Babal, DTA soon.